No, solo mode is a godsend. It just keeps your keep it all clean. Yeah, because oh, they're some... coming in. Hello, they're everyone. Coming in. This is sweet. Wow. The list just keeps going. Welcome, everyone. We're going to like take a couple minutes here, let people kind of join the, the live yeah. editing happy hour with Andrew Kearns. If you want, open the chat window. Tell us where you're uh, watching from. Oh, yeah, the chat window. Hello. Let's forget. This is, this is always cool. Mexico. Alex, welcome. Robert Dallas. Whitefish, Montana. Brian, how are you? Whitefish, thanks for being here. Australia. What time is it in Australia right now? Oh, it's probably like midday morning. <laughs> this is so cool, I think. Oh, I ask a question and then it just, I'm never going to get the answer with all these coming through so fast. From Portugal at 2 a.m.? Damn. That's commitment. Yeah, Cornwall, yeah. 2 a.m. Cornwall, yeah. Aus Austria. Austria. Yeah, 3 Roman. a.m. Roman, you are like one of the best photographers, student of ours. I'm so happy you're here. Thanks for being here, Roman. Man, 3 a.m. That's so insane. This is crazy. You guys got a uh, coffee for that. <laughs> yeah, are you going to go back to sleep? What would you do, Andrew, if you watched a webinar? At 2 a.m., are you going back to sleep? It ended. I, would, I would hear us say, oh, we're recording it, and I would just shut my computer and go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, would, I would probably go back to sleep after if I watched I, something at 3 a.m. Yeah, I think so. This is cool. So everyone, like, the chat window is open, and then there is another Q&A panel. So we can open that up if we get to the moment where we can ask Andrew some questions. That's a good spot. What, uh, what beverages does everyone bring? What do you have, Joel? I got um, I got a, a West Coast a Fernie Fernie uh, Brewery. Do you okay. know where Fernie is? It's in Southeast British Columbia. It's a good brewery. Nice. And you? I got um, actually okay. Story behind this stout is set. It's a dark stout, and it's probably my favorite stout I've ever had. And I have no idea what it is because when I was moving out of my recent place, it just ended up in our fridge one day. Uh -huh. And it just sat there for months and no one, like no one claimed it. Like a couple of roommates had moved out and it just sat there. And then when I was moving out, I was the last person there and it was still there. And I like, oh, it was like in a big growler too. So I like opened it, smelled it. And I was like, oh, this smells like a great stout. And so when I moved into <laughs> this new place, I was like, well, I'm just going to take it with me. And I did. And it's the best stout I've ever had. And I have no idea what it is. No way. Yeah. That's awesome. I love stout. I'm dark beer. Me too. I'm very much a dark beer guy. Anything lager? I'm just not a huge lager fan. That's fair. Too I also got some uh, smoked Gouda cheese. Julian, thanks for joining us from Banff. It was really great to see you last week. That was really fun. Um, raspberry ale, maybe from Banff Brewing. I don't know. Raspberry That's ale. So That's cool. good. Oh, Ewan's in here from Scotland. 2 a.m. there, eh? Oh, man. Um, yeah, let's just wait like another minute or so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, someone's got a Cabernet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Diet Coke until I'm 21. Good call. Egg, yeah. Way to follow the law. This is good. Spellbinder IPA from Ren House. Oh, sort. the big wave, the Kona Brewing. That's a classic. I hear that runs so expensive in Australia. Apparently they have a really big alcohol tax there. And so they had a um, like Kona Brewing stuff. You know, you can buy like a six pack in Hawaii for 17 or $20. Yeah. And someone told me it costs like 80 in Australia. And I was like, God. <laughs> no way. Yeah, they have apparently a huge tax there on it. Scott Nelson IPA. Well, this is pretty cool. Thanks yeah. everyone for being here. Um, oh, Siri, I didn't talk to you. And <laughs> just Siri, just, <laughs> like, what? Can they talk? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Why is someone speaking? Okay, it's like, uh, I think we can uh, maybe introduce. Yeah, let's, let's get in. Yeah, so thank you everyone so much for being here. My name's uh, Joel Fuller. I'm the community lead here at Wildest. Um, this evening, we're going to kind of uh, talk about mastering Photoshop and Lightroom fan fundamentals. We are so 
uh, kind of blessed here this evening to have the instructor of that course, an amazing photographer, join us, Andrew Kearns. Thank you for being here. What up? No, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. It's been so fun to teach these workshops, both of them, and then now adding more to the editing one. Yeah, it's really cool to have Wildness as a platform to share that. And yeah, when I get those messages and emails from people saying how much they've learned, it's a really cool thing to see. And it's really cool to see there's almost 120 people in here now that all are just wanting to learn, wanting to see editing processes and just, you know, it's just, it's important to invest in that. And it's really cool to see the amount of people who want to. Yeah, absolutely. So, so recently you, you went out to Montana and you filmed with, with the wildest team here, 14 additional episodes. So what yeah. do people get out of the, what's kind of entails the, the 14 additional episodes? Yeah. So it goes through my whole process. So oftentimes if I'm actually putting a lot of effort into a shoot, it's not just a day to day walking around quick shoot. It's like, I want to put effort into it. There's a lot of planning that goes ahead of time. So making a mood board on Pinterest, drawing out my own ideas. And we discussed that in the workshop. So it's not just editing now. It's like here, I want to, I want to execute on these ideas that I've had. And here's a mood board to support that look. So walking through how I make those mood boards, walking through how I create those ideas and such like that, and then going into the actual shoot. So you actually get to see behind the scenes of me shooting the all the mood board stuff and the drawings I did. So we met up with Eli, who's a friend from Wildest, uh, of Wildest, who lives in Montana. And we just shot on his property, which was really fun because it's totally organic. Like we just showed up to his property, shot, and it was, it was brilliant. And it started snowing near the end of it, near blue hour. So it created a lot of really cool, like texture stuff that I was so keen on. Um, and just shooting the entire, <clears throat> excuse me, shooting that entire storyline there from a little bit before sunset all the way into blue hour of just him at his property. It's, it's nothing, it's not an insane epic story. It's just his natural day-to-day -day thing. So that was really fun to capture because, you know, in Montana, it's snowy, you have to snow shovel and all this stuff. And, and she just is like, it's just like a different, like kind of like grit style, you know? a very Huckberry style. And that's kind of the vibe, the aesthetic we were going for. So anyways, we did that whole shoot until blue hour. And then we took all those photos and went to the editing room and edited them. So you get to see the plan, the shoot, and then the editing, obviously, since it's the editing workshop. Um, but alongside with that on the workshop, we decided to give the raw files out too. So you're able to edit those same raw files I took that day with Eli. Um, yeah, it was it was really great. It was uh, like the conditions were amazing, and I had the, I had a lot of fun on that shoot. And I think it really like especially with all the changes in Lightroom since the beginning, since this workshop got released, they put the new color grading panel in and a bunch of other stuff that it, it just took Lightroom to the next level. And with the coloring, it's a different ball game. Like I haven't touched Photoshop in a while just because the upgrades they've made to Lightroom. So long story long, uh, that's, that's kind of what got put into the workshop was the whole entire process from planning all the way to editing and also the shoot in between. Yeah, it came out great. And uh, I think uh, I am proud of it. And I think the team is too. So very proud. It's like, it's a basically, it's, it's an add on quote, yeah. unquote, but it's basically a full workshop <laughs> yeah. you know, from start to finish. So if everyone's, if any, if you know, if you're interested, it, it is basically a new workshop it, and if it you really have, is. Yeah. have purchased the mastering Photoshop and Lightroom fundamentals before it's, it's, it's in there. Now you can go in there and you can watch it. Yeah. Um, for anyone that's interested um, tomorrow, is, is the final day for, for early access pricing. So you can jump on our website and you can check this workshop out, Mastering Photoshop and Lightroom Fundamentals for $99, uh, regularly priced at 149. So that ends tomorrow, head to our website and, and check it out. But tonight we've also collected a bunch of photographs of yours mm -hmm. and we have the editing God here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, we have a, an incredible, you know, we can all learn uh, quite a bit tonight, I think, through, through yeah. Andrew. I hope so. Yeah, so I'll just bring up the first photo and share the screen here in a second. Um, yeah, and if you guys, so as I'm editing too, I'll mention the people's name. And if you're in here watching it, uh, Joel, how do they try to, I, we want to try to bring the person who shot the photographer of the, we want to try to bring the photographer in and chat with us. So um, the first one is a photograph by Daniel Skilton. Um, so if you're in here. Yeah. Uh, how do they try to ping in? Let me just see here one moment. Sure. I'll go ahead and share my screen too. Yeah. Fantastic. Boom. And, and potentially some of these people might not be currently here. Sure. Yeah, we'll give it a little, little window here. Sounds good. But if you want to jump in there, sure, you can start. Uh, I believe that um, if you're if you're here, like message in the in the chat window, and we'll try and get you in. I think there's an option for you to click, Sweet. and I can like as the admin give you uh, permission to join. Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, mention the names of the photos I'm going to try to get to tonight. Um, the goal is who, to who is this? Whose photo was this again? This was Daniel Skilton. Uh, at Danny J Skilton on Instagram. Okay, he's right here. Sweet. Sick. Danny, hey, how are you? Okay, let's start editing this photograph. And I'm going to like, if there's a way for you to try and join us, Danny, do so. If not, I might yeah. just change one thing behind the scenes here. Cool. <clears throat> so yeah, this is a great photograph. First of all, uh, you'll see in the next four photographs, I tried to get a good variety. Uh, and this one, the, the portrait variety, but the subject of a good portrait to a T. Um, and then, yeah, let's just get started on it. So I'll show you my first edit I did. I kind of did a mock through edit. And this is the what I came up with. So, oh man, come on computer. Got so many programs on it, it's freaking out. <laughs> um, but yeah, very simple, great image. Uh, I really want to, I hope you can get him in here because I'm really curious to see where it was shot at because there's, there's oh, like fevers yeah. in the back here. Yeah. Actually, uh, I can here. I promote to, I can promote, hey, Danny, I'm going to promote you to a panelist if you're ready. Then when we're done with the photo, I'm going to demote you from panelists. <laughs> okay. What is been demoted? Uh, Danny Skilton will be rejoining the webinar as a panelist. If Sweet. That works. Yeah. There it is. Wow, that works. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey. Danny, what's up? Not much. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Gosh, this was unexpected. Yeah, no, it's a great photo. Um, I'm just curious, where was it shot at? And was it commercial work or was it just a photograph where you were or what? Um, this was commercial work. Um, I shot it in Hell's Gate National Park here in Kenya um wow so yeah it's i mean it's a cool national park there's like loads of climbing um obviously loads of animals as well so yeah. you're just climbing amongst like zebras and whatnot it's pretty cool that's so foreign to hear that's crazy <laughs> that's really yeah. cool. what what national park did you say it was hell's gate hell's um gate. yeah nice and who was the commercial work for um, it was for, uh, this like local climbing, like company, uh, it's called climbing life Kenya. Uh, they're just people I know super cool. Uh, nice. Yeah. It was just a date climbing with zebras and taking photographs. That's crazy. Is that, is that just a normal day there? <laughs> well, I mean, pretty much almost like it being like one of the bigger climbing spots here, um, or like more popular climbing spots. Nice. Yeah, like fairly normal. Cool. Well, welcome in. I'm stoked to do a <clears throat> kind of go through the process on this of what how I got to this image. So, oops, this is the raw, and then you shot this on a Nikon, yeah? And uh, yeah, Nikon Z6. Sick. 
I've discovered as I've been, um, as I've edited other people's photos, I'm actually surprised at how much I've enjoyed editing Nikon photos. I never thought I would say that, but they're actually really nice to edit. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the first time I've ever used it. I, I borrowed it for the shoot. Um, I mean, nice. I was just sort of like <laughs> confused by the colors for a little bit, but really, I don't know. They turned out pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. It was strange. I, I shoot Canon usually, so I don't know. It just felt a little strange. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I mean, it's just a different operating system. It's pretty foreign. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm going to try to get close to what I got before, which was this image. Um, and really most of the work was done for exposure just in going through the basic panel. So as we were talking there, I just uh, changed the exposure up a bit, pushed the shadows a bit, and then pulled down the blacks a bit. And what I was, why I do that is because as you push up the shadows, um, since the subject has a darker skin tone, it's going to bring them out a bit. And then adding a bit of contrast back in by pulling those, the black slider down. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I start. And with most of my images, I end up doing that anyway, whether the subject has a darker skin tone or whether there's shadows in the landscape photo I'm taking or whatever it is. That's just the technique I've always kind of used across photos, pushing up the shadows, bringing down the black slider. Yeah pretty, pretty staple for me. And then adding a subtle clip in the whites on the curves. Um, yeah, we'll just keep going from there. And you kind of go down the process, right? Like command one, two, you're kind of going down as a list. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one of the, my favorite things about Lightroom and stuff is solo mode. So if you open this or right click on this, you have solo mode right here. You go command one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it just goes down like that. Um, so I'll kind of jump in between panels. At the start, I'll usually get a good exposure and then do a little curves work and then go into the color grading, which I'll do right now. And this is like one of the new panels that, um, that Adobe added in in the Lightroom update since the release of the very first editing workshop. Um, it's pretty new and it's really a big game changer. Have you ever messed with this panel, Danny? Um, I haven't actually. Uh, beautiful thing. I, yeah, I think I'm, think I'm going to now. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it so much. See, that looks pretty solid. My room is kind of bright right now, so. It's hard to see my screen, but um, I'll just go on off with it. So yeah, you can kind of see, <clears throat> I hope the resolution is good enough on the stream, but you have this, like this is the highlights, these are mid-tones and this will be shadow area. So I added a bit of warmth into the shadows in a second, I'll turn it on. Um, a little warmth in the mid-tones, so it'll probably affect the ground here and the highlights, I added blue. So that's with it back on. It's very subtle. I really don't know if you can see it on the stream, but it does add a great color contrast because if you look at your wheel of color, um, blue is on the opposite side of orange, like cool tones opposite side of cool, on the opposite side of the warm tones. So just creating a good contrast in between the colors there. So bluer sky and then warmer shadows and mid-tones keeps it really simple. Um, I think one of the other things I did on it was targeted the subject shirt. So you met, you ever messed with like the HSL panel? Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's pretty so powerful. Yeah. So I'll, I'm going to select the subject shirt and just bring it up a tad bit on the saturation that is. I want to be careful because it is affecting some of the grass, but it's not, too bad. I think I, oh man, my computer's running a little slow. It looks yeah. good from our end. And if everyone's getting the same feed as me, Andrew, like it, the, awesome. the computer, the resolution of the screen, everything looks great. Awesome. Okay. That's great news. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty solid. I think from there, let's see. I think I want to push 
the highlights up a bit, the highlights on the white slider. Because I guess, I guess my thought process behind this is like, it is more of a portrait commercial type shot. So in that it's not going to be stylized in a moody, dramatic manner. Like you want the subject to pop, you want the product that they're wearing, which is obviously it's for a climbing thing. So you want the climbing gear to pop. Um, you just want there to be a lot of contrast in that. So that's pretty much what I'm aiming for here. I am going to soften the highlights just a bit, not too much though. I'm gonna come back into the basic panel and make the brightness exposure a little bit more. And then, yeah. Did you shoot this with any uh, off-camera lighting or is it just natural? Uh, yeah, this is all natural. Nice. I'm going to add just a small dark gradient at the bottom here. And then I'm going to add one more going from the side, a brighter one. So it kind of, um, it just pronounces that light a bit more like the actual direction of it. So that's with it off, that's with it on. You'll see just a small shadow pop down there and yeah, a little bit of brightness going through there. Yeah, looking good. So that was the before. Obviously that's how raw files will end up is just darker um, and you just go into the editing from there and boom. That's pretty solid to me. Um, yeah. Is it close to the one that you did beforehand? Yeah, actually, let's see. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, let's do some comparison, Andrew. I think it is. Oh, I think it's better, actually. <laughs> I think I'll it's better. It. I think right, they both okay, let me go see. side by side here. Uh, so this is the most recent one on the left, and the one on the right was the one prior. So yeah, I think it actually looks a lot better on the left. I think I got a lot better color contrast in it. The overall exposure is definitely a bit better too. Um, I think the reason why is I was editing earlier with all my blinds open and it was hard to see my screen. And now that they're closed, I can really see a lot of detail on my screen. And I, I, I'm really, I'm really, yeah, I'm pleased with that. Yeah, it's wicked. Yeah. Awesome. Danny, did you want to say anything else about the photo before we uh, yeah. um, rude? I don't <laughs> demote you. <laughs> uh, not, <laughs> uh, not, not, not really. Just honestly, like, thank you guys for, I mean, like I said, this was unexpected. So yeah, thanks, Joe, Andrew, for like selecting this picture it means, yeah. it means a lot. No, thanks for taking it. It was a great example of like a portrait and like a good cross between a portrait and commercial. And I am a I'm actually a big climber myself, so I gravitated right toward it. And oh gosh, yeah, Danny, you're in Kenya right now. Uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's home. That's cool. Okay. Cool. What what time is it? It's like four a.m. <laughs> 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 that is amazing. You're in okay, Kenya. well, Danny, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much, Danny. Right. Thank you for having me on. This was an honor. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. Sweet. Um, cool. I think other than that, like, I mean, you could go in, like, I'll just not do it for time's sake, but you could go in and target the subject with a brush tool and then make them a bit sharper. And then also maybe you can use the background a little bit by taking out clarity just to pop them out that much more. But yeah, due to, due to the time we have, I won't go too nitty gritty into it but yeah awesome people, people people are commenting that they love the edit and i like it katarina just says we are vet we are very dedicated as in we as maybe like people that enjoy being here great that's yeah. awesome so this next photo is brian juice uh at juice brian on instagram i think brian this is uh brian you're here right now aren't you I think you're yes he is fantastic oh. brian i'm finding you yeah and if there's any questions you see joel while i'm editing let me know because i can't see the chat right now while sharing my screen so okay i'm happy to answer in the midst of editing awesome 
Brian, I think you're able to speak now. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Can you hear me? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Brian, where was the shot taken? This is crazy. This is uh, Death Valley National Park in California uh, about a week ago. Do you know these people there or is it just randos? Yeah, that's my, my son and my nephew and my brother-in-law. Nice. Yeah, I'm always drawn to photos of small people in big places, so naturally. And also, this is a really fun color contrast for me, like the blue on the, it's like a cool blue sky and just warm tones on the sand and the texture and stuff. So I was immediately drawn to it. Cool, thank you. Yeah. What were you doing in Death Valley, just family trip? Yeah, we, we rented a kind of a, a house uh, in Vegas and we took a day trip over there. Right on. Yeah, it's a great image. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything else you want to say about it or should I just get into it? I'll just get into it. Sweet deal. Um, this is also shot on a Nikon, it looks like. Got any, yeah? Yeah, it's a Z7 II. Right on. Yeah, I, I need to try more Nikons. Like, like I said, like on the last one too, I'm always, I've actually really enjoyed editing them. And I don't know, I guess I'm surprised by that because I've never used them. Um, Jake just commented, oh no, Nikon winning the game. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know Nikon is, is considered pretty lame, but I, I, I tried Canon and the colors just aren't as good for me. <laughs> hey, there you go, shots fired. <laughs> oh, that's great. No, I mean, yeah, I, I've actually switched to Sony somewhat recently um, in the last year or so. And yes, yeah, it's, it's different. It's different in color science, but it is very editable. So, and I feel like Nikon, like I feel like a lot of my favorite photographers actually are Nikon shooters. So maybe, maybe they're onto something, but anyways, let's actually get into this edit. So here's the raw file and here's what I came up with on my computer loads. Boom. Um, so I'll kind of talk through it real quick a little bit bright for my taste at the moment, but the way I saw it was you have a good color contrast between the sky and the, I guess you call this, is this sand or the rock or I don't even know what this is. It's sandstone. Sandstone. So you have a good like color contrast, a uh, very natural color contrast of blue sky and this warm orangish sandstone. And then the subject of your images are dead center and they're going to be the darkest point of the image. So that's what my plan was when I was editing this. Um, and then when you look at the raw here, yeah, it's very flat. So it was just a, it was a lot of, not a lot of, but just a few vocal adjustments that really made the difference. So without further ado, I'll get into it. I think I just, let's see. I'm basically putting the exposure at where it will be and then warming it up a slight bit with the white balance. And that honestly takes us most of the way there. Um, oh, one thing I did too, um, is I did lens correction. So here, I'll just go back a step. So that's what it was before. And then with lens, lens corrections added into it, boom, it just a little bit more, um, the composition just supporting your eyes leading to the subject a bit better there. Um, and all that was was just lens correction, taking some distortion down, and then some transform properties. Looks like I just changed the aspect there. So nothing too crazy, but just pops the, makes it a little bit better crop. Um, and then from there, I believe I just went into the curves creating a nice, a very subtle, subtle S curve. And dampened the highlights a bit by clipping them. Yeah, so that's before, that's after with the curve. So it kind of creates this flat, flatter image. Cause like I said, the highest contrast point I want in this are the people. Um, and it leaves them pretty unaffected, but it kind of flattens everything else out there while pulling the the um, darker tones down a bit. And let's go back into tab one here. Just like the last image, pushing up the shadows, 
bringing down the black slider. Maybe a little less, not too much with this one. Adding a bit of texture in there because I really love the texture of that sandstone. Hold on, I'm gonna do one thing here. I'm gonna try to make this a bit bigger so everyone can see it. There we go. So adding some texture there into that because the sandstone is just a great texture. And then let's go into the color panel. Um, and I have a I have a trick I did with this. I'll show you in a second that really um, that I was pretty psyched on, uh, but I'll get there in a second. So just adding a little bit of sh uh, orange into the shadows. Not too much. There's not too much shadows there, but there's plenty of mid tones. So if the feed is still going high res here, you can see those adjustments there in the, sh in the sandstone, a little, little bit of orangish green added in. And then the highlights, simply just making it a little blue, nothing too yeah. crazy. The quality is still very high, like I great. subtle changes, so. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then one thing, one thing I've been doing on a lot of photos is I'll like do all these color adjustments and then like I'm naturally veer toward a more warmer image. So if I go to this blue, <clears throat> so if I go command two here in the tone curve, add one point there, one point there, and then just drag down this one very subtly. Um, it adds just like a subtle warm cast over the image. However, it did make the sandstone a gross color. So I'm gonna just come back in here to that panel change it, mess with these sliders a little bit, the luminance sliders that is. Cool. And so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty solid. So that's the before. That's the after. Hitting the Y key to see it side by side there. Eh, come on. There it is. Yeah, so that's before and after. Pretty dramatic change, but that's the one thing I found with Nikon. They're they're very edit editable. It's a hard word to say. Um, but one trick I one thing that while I was struggling with this image was um, since it is so flat, it was hard to get a sense of depth for the image. So I actually edited that in on the other one, and I very I did this very simply by using gradient filters. So if you hit the M key, it selects this thing up here. I'm going to take one on the exposure, notch it down just a bit, and run it on this down or the lower part of the image. Just position it right there. And I'm going to take another one. I'm going to run it at the top here. And instead of upping the exposure, what I did was I actually went into the haze and took out some of that D and took it lower. So like, let's just put it at negative 16 or so. Um, yeah, and so what that did, let me go back to that panel and turn it off and on. So that's without it right there. It's not bad necessarily, but when you add that touch of shadow down here, or I guess taking down the exposure at the bottom right here, and then you take out some of the clouds and diffuse them a bit, as well as let it affect some of the mountains, boom. It just adds a bit more of that depth to it. Um, cause I, this image has a ton of depth and I was, uh, like it just didn't really reciprocate that through the raw file because the raw file is there to have just so much editable data that it makes it relatively flat. So naturally didn't keep a ton of that sense of depth. So adding that back in, again, I'll do that before and after. I think really added a lot to understanding the scale of this place of Death Valley. Um, other than that, I mean, last thing I might go do is when I did that negative D haze, I feel like it made it a little less blue. We're just finding a better blue in there. Yeah, cool. So yeah, that's the before and after right there, side by side. 
side by side again. Bam. Very cool. And just from like a shooting perspective, you know, Brian's original image is, 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 you know, darker. And I think yeah. it's kind of cool to let everyone know. I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew. Yeah. But the camera, modern cameras have the ability to hold a lot of information in shadows, but not a lot of information in highlights. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, if, so you, if you had shot it overexposed from the get go, you could not have made such a cool edit. Yeah, hundred percent. And this is something I'm even trying to learn myself having switched to Sony. It's like, I'm used to shooting like on the 5D Mark II or even the Mark IV, where I was usually overexposing less on the Mark IV, but especially on the Mark II, I was exposing for my subject and that was it. Like I was just focusing on nailing the exposure of my subject. And yeah, now that I've switched to Sony, it's totally different. Like if I expose my images like Brian did here, or yeah, like Brian did here, like that, like I usually am much more pleased with the edit. It takes a little more effort to get there, but mm -hmm. if you're not editing a massive collection of images and you have time to focus on one, it's definitely worth it. Um, yeah, but let's see real quick. I wanna see, so this was the recent one. This was the recent one. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this is the recent one I did. This is the mock-up I did earlier. Uh, the recent one is significantly better. Once again, I, I blame the blinds being open, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or there's the pressure of hundreds of people watching you. <laughs> yeah, now, now the pressure is on. I'm not, I'm not second guessing things now. I'm just streamlining everything that's coming to my mind. So yeah, awesome. Brian, great image. Do you have anything more you want to share about it? Oh, thanks. Um... You know, I, a couple things. One, it was like super, super windy so much so that I had trouble standing when I was yeah. taking this. Um, and two, I don't know if it matters, but um, I'm using all old adapted F mount lenses. So no way. Yeah, I think I feel like the old. Uh, is that like the film camera lenses for Nikon? Oh, it spanned uh, from pre digital to digital. Wow. Yeah. So I'm such a huge fan of that. I have a. Um, I have on my Mark II an old 80 to 200 for it. Like it's an old plasticky camera lens. It's brilliant. But I always feel like those older lenses render colors and sharpness just a little different. I don't know how to describe it, but it has a look to them that I'm such a huge fan of. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you so much for editing this. It was, uh, I learned a ton. Good, yeah, no, I'm glad. You have a great eye for composition. So it was easy choice. Well, thanks. Right, thanks so much for, for submitting your photo and, and talk soon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, take care. Take care. All right. Thanks. Um, before we jump into the next photos, there's a couple of really cool questions here, Andrew, that I, I yeah. want to ask yeah, you to people. I also just want to reiterate, mention that tomorrow is the last day to jump in on Andrew's, uh, Andrew's Mastering Photoshop and Lightroom Fundamentals Workshop with the 14 additional episodes. So you can head to our website. It's um, early access ends. And right now you can get it for $99. Regular price is $149 and you can do so on our website. So thank okay. you very much uh, for that. Now, a couple questions here. Um, yeah. There was some back and forth just going on. People were answering, quite, you know, it's kind of cool actually. Cool. Quick question for Andrew. This is from Max and also Spencer had the same-ish question. He's asking you, are you paying close attention to the histogram and the technical exposure, quote unquote, or do you mostly edit based off what feels and looks right to you? You know, there's some people that are like, peep, you know, peeping the histogram so hard and they don't want this highlight to hit on the right and they don't want the darks to hit and they want it to look like a middle, you know, like a mountain. Mm -hmm. you're, you're editing off of feel or do you also consider the histogram? 99% uh, of the time, I'm not paying a ton of attention to the histogram. Um, there are certain ones, like, for instance, if I want to make sure I'm not losing, like on the first image on my very first run, I wanted to make sure I wasn't losing um, data in the subject's skin because you had a darker skin tone. So I was like watching and making sure, and, and there would be some data lost in like the strap, the black straps of the black diamonds cams that were in the shadows. That's fine, but really I want to make sure if there's an important part of the image that I'm not losing data, especially in the shadows. Highlights, I'm usually clipping them. So it's never a huge deal. Um, I, I rarely, I never have issues with that. But 
yeah, if it's darker parts of the image, I will pay attention to the histogram. One trick for that, um, I'll share my screen again here real quick, is I'll just use this image for an example. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Uh, so if you look at these two triangles right here, so if I just completely just demolish the shadows there and I hover that, you can see where the data was lost if you hover over that triangle. Um, mm -hmm. That's really helpful when editing for skin tones or yeah, if your subject has a lighter skin, if the sun is blowing their skin out. Um, I'll just go like this. You can do, oh, I clipped it. Hold on. See, this is why I don't struggle with it because I clip it. Um, boom. But you can see where it got clipped by just hovering over that little triangle. You can also click on it permanently. And then as you, as you brighten it, you can see, see it just get obliterated. Um, but yeah, typically, I guess the simple answer to that question is I'm much more so looking at how the image is actually like, not that I'm not getting too technical, really. I'm, okay. I'm really just seeing like, oh, I appreciate the look of this and kind of going forward with that. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, one more, one more question. Sorry. I was just trying to, I'm. I'm like trying to be better at multitasking when doing these webinars. Like I want to like stay really engaged with you, but then I'm also like trying to read. It does, our creative minds, it doesn't make, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Um, but someone else was asking, like you kind of went in the last one, you went into like some camera corrections in Lightroom. Do you often apply a profile and see a lens correction? Yeah. So I actually, just for time's sake on this, all the, I copied over, the profile and lens corrections on all the images we're editing. I did, I think I did it to most of them. Um, the first two I definitely did, but yeah, I will always, I like, even if it's a good composition, I'll always go in and try to correct, like just, I guess, wiggle the image around a little bit. So it looks a little bit better composed because with your camera, I mean, even if you just shoot on like a Canon with a 24 to 70, you go in and click on that profile corrections thing, it kind of warps it slightly because the lens itself is actually altering the image. Because the circular piece of glass, the way it's, I don't know the science behind it, but it does mess with it. And so, um, so actually, for instance, once again, I'll share my screen real quick. I thought the, I did a small adjusting on the first one. Um, so just went in here to the distortions panel. I mean, you can see that very subtly because technically like right here is the, or I guess I did a crop to it as well. So let me go back to the original crop. So right here is the center of the image, which means everything around it will slightly start to distort, not a ton. Like it's not a terrible distortion, but there is just a subtle distortion to it because the lens is in a circular shape. So when I add that correction, you'll, if you watch our subject here, it just kind of straightens their pose a little bit. Their pose was already straight, but because the, um, because the camera was, it's a circular lens, it's naturally going to do that. And then I added a little bit of transform here. Um, very subtle. You can, you can see the slight change there. I'm not doing anything like I'm not altering the subject's figure. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just fixing what the lens affected. And mm -hmm. so one thing I noticed in this image is uh, um, Daniel shot it at right above waist level, which is something I do all the time. In fact, I shoot most of my portraits below their, below their head. I usually go lower, but what happens is it does do, that like it, it's really subtle like it, it's like the most nitpicky thing to try to show but it does if you it kind of slants their body a little bit that way and then take off the other lens correction it distorts them a little wider than usual so add that lens correction on and then a little bit of adjustment in the transform panel and it just makes them seem a bit more upright makes it look a little more natural so once again don't go overboard don't like I, I never get into like targeting, oops. Uh, I never get into like targeting people's features on their body, like just correcting the lenses because it does affect the image and you want to present how it looked naturally. So 
Yeah. Cool. We had one more question. Uh, Tanya, yeah. sorry, is up there. She's asking, is it going to be recorded? Yes, it's being recorded right now. And uh, Andrew is probably going to flip it on his YouTube channel or it might be on Wild this YouTube channel as well. Yeah. She said that there's fire truck, there's a forest fire. I'm not laughing. I also don't mean to laugh when it's a serious issue. It's just crazy. She said there's like a forest fire approaching or something. And I don't know. So Tanya or Tanya, I hope everything's fine. Yeah, I Again. hope everything's fine. It's, oh, geez, uh, it's okay. It's April. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. All right. If you need to get out though, it is recording. So you're freaking out though. Well, don't freak out too much. I hope <laughs> you're fine. Sorry for laughing. Yeah, no, keep your priorities in yeah. line. No, this yeah, will be recorded. Watch it later. Yeah. Um, do you want to jump into another photo? Sure. Um, this next one I chose, uh, it's by Taylor Butters. Taylor. If they're in here. Let's invite them in. Okay. Um, but yeah, the reason I, I chose this photo, you know, the first photo was a portrait commercial type photo. The second one was a landscape photo. This one was just your kind of classic. Um, Can you share your screen? I think. Uh, oh. <laughs> and also Taylor is, um, some of these people had messaged just earlier. She might be in a time zone that didn't, she wasn't as, not saying that not people are, are, are committed or uncommitted, but yeah, she might watch this later. So Taylor is not in with us. That's fair. Um, well, then I won't spend too much time on this, but I wanted to highlight this one because um, when we go on trips and travel, you know, usually the photos we are sharing on Instagram and all that are the really great portraits, like the first one we just saw, and then also really big landscapes like the Death Valley one. Um, but then we also take all these other images that are just like your day to day thing, like, or day to day stuff or just day to day subjects for that area. Like, so this image, for instance, I would never see in the US. Um, I'm not sure where it was shot, but I wouldn't see this in the US. And that alone, adding that to an entire collection of images adds so much more to the story. Um, and that's why I wanted to choose this image because it isn't necessarily that perfect portrait, the epic landscape. It's just a day-to-day -day image. Taylor, she snapped this right outside of a car of just some bulls chilling on a street like like it's just it's just you don't see that day to day like when i saw this it caught my attention because i was like i don't see that uh, <clears throat> and i think it's just such a great thing to add to collections of images so um i'll show you my original edit on it and yeah for time's sake and since they're not here as well i won't go too deep into it maybe i could just talk about what i did to it sure yeah i think that would be good um so Here's the before. Oh, just kidding. Here, wait, let me, hold on. Sneaky there, you're fast with that copy paste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, not my first rodeo. <laughs> the, wizard just, the wizard just appeared there. <laughs> not my first rodeo. Um, sick, okay, so let's get back on subject here. So first off, I cropped it quite a bit. Um, this, I mean, you can see the full image here. It's like, oh man, it's being difficult with me. Boom. So you can see the full image here. Um, that's the before full crop. Yeah, pretty, pretty like classic little travel out the shot, out the door image. But then I went into, I cropped it down to here because I really like that 16 by nine ratio, I guess because a lot of this right here wasn't really necessary for the image. Um, and really the main subject of the image were the bulls in the middle of the road. So cropped it in there, creating a nice little composition with like the rule of thirds here. So you have this line and this line, uh, the steer is on the right side line and the door frame is close to that left side thirds line left it at that. Um, I desaturated some of the red in the back. You can see it all right here. Let me make this a little bigger. Yeah, you can see all the red and stuff like in the back right there. Uh, it was a very, it grabbed my attention quite a bit. So I, yeah, I just made sure it didn't as much with <laughs> a little bit of editing. Um, 
But the main thing was, um, since it was such a last second, I'm sure it was like a very last second out the car, out the window image, um, the aperture was sitting at f8. So it actually got a lot of um, a lot of the subjects in the back in in focus. So it was really hard to tell what it was trying to focus on. And that's why I chose this image because it was really close to being like just dialed spot on if there was like a low aperture. So I wanted to like kind of fake that in a way. And so right there, I'll just show you my local adjustments really. Um, first off, I did two, I did two gradient filters. So one right here, just darkening the side of the car. One right here, darkening this edge. Uh, nothing too crazy, just a quarter negative on this exposure on the right, and then a third negative on the left. Um, and then I targeted the, I guess they're, I think they're bulls or the steer. I targeted the steer here. Uh, you can see all right there. Oh, come on. That's where I targeted them. Uh, and I turned that off and on so you can see what I did. So that's off. That's on. So I just added a bit more texture to them, a slight up in the exposure. A little bit of contrast throughout them, uh, just messing with the highlights, shadows, whites, black slider, um, added clarity, sharpness, stuff like that, just to make them a little more apparent. Uh, again, I'll turn that off and back on. Am I also? Am I like moving at a good pace here? I feel like I'm talking so fast. You're, I, I, you're not. You, there's a lot going on, and you wanted to get through this one fast. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you're talking, but I think I, I'm following along. Okay, cool, uh, cool. Um, yeah, so like I said, the steers are targeted with that, with some right. local. Adjustments. How are you targeting portions of the photos, uh, David? Sure. Let me go. Let me go over to. Oh my God, my computer's running so slow. I'm running like so many programs and recording it. Um, I it yeah, I think the computer also like gets tired from sharing your screen. This is also taxing. Yeah, it's like breathing pretty hard. I hope it's not going <laughs> through the audio. Uh, no, I'm good. So I'll just, this is the, I'll just delete it real quick. So all I'm doing is hitting the K button, which opens up this little brush right here. And there's a few things here. So if you, I, so if you see my little brush here, um, to make it bigger and smaller, I'm just scrolling up and down. And if you hold shift, it changes the feathering. You can see the outer circle gets bigger and smaller. So I'm just using those shortcuts as I go through here. And there's also one other shortcut. I'll show you what it does. So right now, I'm hitting the O key there to bring up that red as I paint uh, the bull. And you'll notice that, well, I didn't work there. Hold on. Hmm. Let's see. Let me find a very high contrast area. So if I'm like targeting right here, this is just for example purposes, um, and I hit K and I start masking it, you'll notice that even though my circle is like touching right here, it's not gonna paint right there. And what that's doing, see even like on this bottom part running all the way through and it's even having trouble connecting on these like white letters there. That's this auto mask thing right here. So if I turn that off and do the same thing, it paints wherever I paint. Um, auto mask is huge. Uh, and I, is this, are that's you learning insane. something? I did not know that. That's like a, that's a gem that I just learned. Oh yeah. And so the shortcut for that, if you're selected on the brush is A. So you can just, so you can literally just like, and um, also alt, oh. just, if you know the alt one, that's just taking it off. So you can hit alt and then take it all off. Make sure as you're pressing alt though, the auto mask isn't on. Otherwise it'll selectively delete your brush, which is kind of annoying. Um, so yeah, if I'm going through here, and then like, oh, it's not selecting the letters like I want. I just hit the A key, boom. And it just selects the letters, hit the A key again. And then now it won't select the white again. Uh, but now it's not selecting this pole there. And then, oh, I went over just a little bit there. Take that out with all, like super fast, super efficient. Um, that's how I targeted the bulls though. Let me go back to the original. Kind of flying through this here. Um, so yeah, that, that just 
pops out the bulls, make them, makes them the sharpest part of the image as well as the brightest. Um, and then the real trick here though, is I created a radial filter. So with radial filters, let me go back to the original out of set. Oops. Hold up. Oh my God. Come on computer. Okay, hold on, it's not going. Okay, so with radial filters, sorry about that. Computer is struggle busing right now. I'm clicking the wrong buttons because of it. Um, so radial filters are the same thing as gradient filters. It targets a specific part of the image. And the shortcut for those are shift M so you have radial or you have gradient filters that are M. Radial filters are shift M, almost the same thing. And what those do, I'll just do it right there. And I'm also, I think I already mentioned this, but clicking the O key and that shows you where it's affecting. Um, so what I did for this one is I just created a radial filter. This is kind of like a shitty rig I like to use a lot. I'll create a radial filter around the cows. And so Right now it's only affecting the cow area, but let's say I wanted to affect everything but the cows. You come down here to this invert and just click that. And now it affects everything around the cows. So very helpful. And that's what I did for the edit. So I came into the cows here, made a radio filter. I've called these animals like four different things, cows, bulls, steer. It's all the same, I guess, but um, what, I did, what I did here, so I'll turn it off and on. That's off. That's on. So you can really see it. Let me make that bigger. That's off and that's on. So, I mean, just take a look at, like, for instance, these trees over here. So if I turn it off, just so sharp, so contrasty, really catches your eye, very bright in the back turn that on and it's just like, you basically fake bokeh. <laughs> um, <laughs> like totally just cheating it. Um, and you can even see it like a little more local here. Um, so off, very same thing, sharp, bright, contrasty. Cause it was shot at F8. Um, again, it was probably last second shot out the window. So you weren't thinking about settings. You're just thinking about exposure and then boom. So you just, it just, makes it so much less contrasty, blurs this dude's face, blurs the truck. Um, and really it's, I could bring that in a little more and now it's gonna blur that car as well. So it's kind of just like a cheat code. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this is the before. The after, it's not a huge change. I guess the other thing I did too, um, it looks a little over edited right now, to be honest. Like I think I could probably feather out this, I could feather out this circle a little bit more um, just so it gradually gets into where the bull was uh, instead of a more immediate, like obvious circle, it's a little less obvious. So making the edit a bit more subtle. Um, but anyways, the last thing I did was just some color grading stuff. Uh, and what I wanted to do was create a good contrast between the bulls and the other things in the image. So the bulls are white, so they were the highlights. I added a touch of warmth into them. You can see that right there. And then in the shadows, I added a touch of blue. And I didn't even touch the midtones. Like I probably touched a little bit on the warmth there. Boom. And so without that, there it is it seems more pink in this area. And then with it on, it creates a very subtle, kind of like greenish, bluish contrast against a warm tone in the highlights. So it's not a huge edit, like it's pretty subtle, um, but it does like, it's just, you kind of went in depth really quick on it. Like you faked some bokeh or faked some depth of field, faked some of like your camera settings in a way and then created a nice contrast between the highlights and the shadows to really bring out the subject of your images. And like, yeah, if you 
if you shoot an image you wanted to shoot at a lower aperture like you wanted to shoot at f4 f2.8 but you actually only shot at like f8 or f11 um, i'll show you what i did to the radio filter see if i can make that bigger um yeah you can see all those changes there so i just made it a little cooler in the temperature a little darker in the exposure and all these like texture clarity dehaze, I took it low. And that's what really affected a lot of it. So taking out the texture and also the sharpness down here. So I just took out a ton of sharpness, a bit of dehaze clarity and a ton of texture to create that fake blur in the image. So yeah, a little cheat code there for you. Um, but it makes a pretty big difference as you can see in that before and after. Um, and it creates a nice contrast and draws you into your subject, which are the cows in this situation, that much more. That was wordy. I, I think people are pretty stoked with it. Okay. I feel like- <laughs> No, no, like... no, no. It was like the wizard just was like, you're like showing off some pretty hardcore skills. There. Good, good. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cause um, like- So with seven, I have nowhere to really be, right? I, like not imminently, you know, there's no pressure sure. to want to go through another image. Oh, I would love to go through this last one. Yeah, it's by Do it. Stephen Catalano. Okay, let's see. Or maybe Stefan. Stephen or Stefan. Okay, one sec. I'll stop sharing for a second. Stephen, let's see if Stephen's with us right now. Stephen C is here. I'm here. Sweet. Rad. Awesome. That's sweet. Stephen, I have just granted you. A lot of talks now about this. Promotion. I'm going to promote you to panelist. I will be joining the webinar as panelist. Steven, are you here? Yeah, I think he popped in. Um, Tori asked, what is the shortcut for invert? I don't think there, uh, there, there might be a shortcut for it, but I haven't figured it out. I, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool if there was. Let me know if you find it. <laughs> okay, awesome. I'm just going to let, so yeah, Stephen, I think you're a panelist now. I can see you up in, 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 as the admin, as a panelist. Maybe you're trying to figure out the audio or video situation in your house or, or whatever. So yeah. you can also, if it's not working, just send me a message here yeah. in the chat. And go. I can answer a few questions while we wait. And yeah, if they're not able to pop in on video or photo or video or um, my audio. <laughs> video or photo. I say that sentence so many times, like, oh, what do you do for work? Oh, photo and video. So it's just like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I can answer a few questions while we wait for, Sounds good. for them to set up their audio. But someone asked, uh, how did you learn all the hotkeys? I know many of them you can see by hovering, but what about the others? I, a lot of Googling, to be honest. So like, I would just like wonder, um, yeah, I would just be curious on like, oh, how can I, how can I make the curves go slower? So, I mean, here's a quick lesson while we're waiting. Um, if I go into the curves panel and you click on it and it, it's kind of like a little buck wild, like it just is so dramatic on this, like any small movement you do just is so dramatic. So, I was curious, I was like, is there a way to make it less dramatic? And I just looked up light, excuse me, I looked up Lightroom curve shortcuts. And basically what I found was that if you click the Alt key, so I'll make a point. If you click and hold the Alt key, it is so much slower. And you can move it around any which direction. And let's say you wanna keep it on that line that you put it on. You hold Shift and it stays on that vertical line. Um, very helpful. I never, I like, I don't think I use the curves without pressing the alt key. Like I never let it free roam like that. I always hold the alt key to make it slower. So when you have very odd specific questions, just try Googling it in the best way of wording you can think of. Um, that's kind of how I learned them. And it also kind of correlates across a lot of other Adobe programs. So, um, like the alt key is pretty similar in, um, in Premiere, where if you want to select one video clip or audio, but not select the two that are connected, you hold the Alt key and it just selects one. It selects less. It makes it move. You're, you're moving less things around. 
So it kind of correlates across the whole thing. Um, yeah. Steven, can you chat now? I, I think you have talking permitted. But hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> what's up? What's up? Thanks for choosing the shot. Sorry yeah, about the technical difficulties on my end. Oh, no, you're good. The, awesome. um, it's a great shot. It was a straight commercial as it gets image. So I was really excited for it. That's cool. That's great to hear. I actually uh, shot that after watching a lot of, believe it or not, Joel, I was seeing you uh, up there chopping a bunch of wood and stuff. And so I just thought, I was like, I want to take a crack at this. It seemed fun. So um, yeah, I figured I'd go out and do a little spec shoot with it. Fantastic. Nice. Sick. Well, yeah, let's get into it. <clears throat> Let me share my screen again. And is it Steven or Stefan? It's Steven. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah. I have a friend who, I have two friends, Steven and Stefan, spelled the exact same way. So it's um, always a toss up. <laughs> yeah, 50 50. Um, so, first off, this is a fantastic image. I, I was just so stoked to see it because. Um, I guess I just straight commercial image and you shot it, uh, on a Sony. Yeah. Yeah. I was using a a seven R two. Nice. So a ton of editing room. So it is like, you know, just like you should be shooting. Sony is a lot darker, but there's oh, so much room for editing. I had, I had a lot of fun on my mock-up. I'll show you the mock-up here. Um, this is what I came up with. Oh, that's and awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, so I did, the main thing is I targeted, the, excuse me, I targeted the product. So the product is the still saw. Um, I just local adjusted that and to spare time for everyone actually went ahead and just copied it over without adjustments. So we'll get to there in a second. Um, but yeah, first thing I did, like most of the images, just a quick little distortion fix. Um, nothing too crazy. You can see the before and after there. Um, very subtle correction, but a bit better. And again, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the first image is that you shot this low. And so just changing that vertical tab. Uh, so a slight distortion correction on the lens correction profile, and then just cranking the vertical tab down a bit. It just makes it seem yeah. a little less, uh, a little less distorted, a little more like normal to the eye. I'm trying to make it on and off. There we go. Um, yeah. So I also love the lighting in this. Like I'm, I'm always a big fan of backlighting. It just always looks, I think it looks sick, especially on product shots. Um, and with like the light beams coming through. Yeah. It's sick. So let's just get into it. Well, where did you shoot this at or where are you from? I guess. So I'm actually from Virginia. This is at uh, my cabin. It's out in the uh, Shenandoah mountains. Nice. That's uh, I love that area. I've only been there once briefly, but it it's really cool. Yeah, it's a great spot, man. So first thing I did was warm it up a little bit. Nothing too crazy. And then adding a little bit of just changing the tint. One thing I did like about this image, I'm going to pop up the exposure a bit. I love the uh, the face, <laughs> just, just so like the <laughs> I'm chopping wood face, like just such a classic. Like, <laughs> I saw that. I was like, that's such a good detail. I'm so glad you noticed that too. That's one of my favorite yeah, parts. It's so good. Um, so yeah, first thing I did was I went into the tone curve because um, I knew it'll be pretty easy to blow out some lighting here. So I went and clipped it slightly, definitely not that much pop up the exposure just a tad, or no, maybe it's the shadows. Yeah, actually let's do this first. So just getting a nice even, even exposure across the board, getting to something we like. Touch a contrast in there too. All right, so we're moving pretty well through it. That's the before, that's the after. Maybe a little less in the shadows, keep them a little darker. So what we want to do eventually, I guess why I'm thinking about this is um, the main subject is the saw or the chainsaw. So I'm going to make sure I have it the brightest thing in the image in a second, or not necessarily the brightest because the background, but against the subject in the dark um, floor of the image, having it be the brightest thing. So yeah, it's a pretty solid start. Come into the curves. 
just a subtle S curve across the whole thing. Uh, actually, maybe, maybe not an S curve, maybe just a, again, doing that trick I just mentioned, holding Alt and Shift, doing a bunch of very subtle motion movements on it. And right now I'm just targeting the bottom here. So it's just targeting anything that's darker in the image. It's not really targeting anything up above until I go up here. Andrew, we got a quick question, which is very relative to what you're doing right now from Aaron. Uh, why clip the highlights in the tone curve instead of lowering highlights in basic? Oh, that's actually a really good question. Um, let me create a copy of this and just start at the, do a quick. So if you clip the highlights in this, it affects so much of it. Like even up here where like, I wouldn't even consider this a highlight. It affects that even, it kind of affects a general definition of what a highlight is versus if you come into the tone curve and you create a bunch of points like that and you clip the highlight like that, you can see it's only really affecting this part of the image, like the brightest part. Um, you just have much less of a general um, general sense of uh, the definition of highlight or whites even. Like I bet if you come into the white, yeah, even with the white, it still affects up there. I like to get specific with it. And, you know, when I do that, um, number one, I prefer that look. But a huge thing, too, is like if you... So I'll, I'll start off, I'll just clip it real quick and then I'll just push my the white up real quick and then same with the highlights. So making it pretty bright, you know, maybe that's the look you want and it's very bright, but the thing is it doesn't bleed into the white background. So I think my website as well as most people's websites, and this is like so specific and so nitty gritty detail stuff. Um, most of our website backgrounds are this pure white color. So, you know, if you push your whites and highlights really high and get a high contrast and you don't clip your highlights right here, it's just gonna, this isn't the best example, but it's just gonna bleed right into that. Uh, it's gonna bleed right into that same color of white on white. I could also do, hold on, back to this. First image is a bit better example because there's less trees. Um, but yeah, if I like right there, like obviously I wouldn't want this edit to be like this, but that's your sky. It just bleeds right into the background. It just doesn't look that good. And it's something, it's a very nitpicky thing that I noticed, but if you clip that white, boom. Now all of a sudden that, that image doesn't bleed into the background of your website or the background of Instagram. If you're not looking at it in dark mode, it just, it, it clips a little. So it separates that image from the background. Um, this okay. could be used for printing as well, right? If you're gonna leave a little bit of a mask on the outside of your print yeah. and it's pure white, the, the paper that you're printing on. Yeah, just absolutely. The website. So I yeah, so. That's why I always like even this right here. Um, I can't zoom in on it or I would, but it's like barely just above the top. Like it is at, it's at just slightly below full, um, slightly below full, I don't even know what you call that, full white value. I'm um, just slightly clipping the highlights very subtly just to prevent that from happening. So long story long, that's why. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great question though. So let's see. Um, let's pop into, so this is the before, pretty blue. This is after a little more warm. I'm just gonna try adding, try messing around with the color grading panel. So what I'm trying to do here, just create a good color contrast in the image. And what I mean by that is just complementary colors. So like cool and warm tones and naturally, turn that off real quick. So naturally the ground has a subtly more warm tone and the sky is obviously blue in the background. So just 
just really pushing that forward, making that more apparent and coming into the mid tones and probably going to be adding warmth to it, but let's just do our round here. Oh, by the way, a couple shortcuts in this color grading panel. I've been using this entire time. So same like the curves, if you just, if you just let it go, it just free roams. It's kind of a little too dramatic. Uh, but if you hold alt, it slows it down quite a bit there. I'm doing the same mouse strokes I just did, but it's a lot less dramatic. Um, if you hold shift, it stays on that same line. So it's same color, but makes it more saturated. And if you hold alt shift, it moves it very slowly. And then my favorite one, uh, I do this a lot to see what colors I want. So right now I'm trying to figure out what the mid-tone color I want is. I'm going to push it out a bit and hold command and it just stays in a circle. So it adds the amount of saturation. It keeps the same amount of saturation, but it, uh, it's like if I put it way out here and hold command, you see that little, assuming the resolution is still good, you see that little circle pops up right there. And I'm just running circles around my mouse and it stays in that same saturation amount. So you can see the numbers pop up right here, saturation 75 and the hue is just constantly changing. So very helpful. Um, I'm constantly using those when I do this. That's powerful. Yeah, it, it's just, you can get specific. You can get what you want if you just, you know, like I, you can see me here, like I'm holding shift using the saturation, going to command, kind of choosing a different color. Yeah, it's very helpful. Um, sick, so that's looking pretty solid. I will, that's without it. So it's pretty blue, a little purple on his shirt as well. That's with it, so a little more warmer. I think we can maybe even push a little more saturation in the mid-tones. So, so looking at his shirt for this, make it a little more on the orangish warm side. Before, after, looking solid. Um, and then what I want to do before we get into the local adjustment on the saw, I'm just going to push the shadows up a bit more like that. So I think that's a bit better exposure on it and then pull the blacks down just to create a little contrast in them, but still make them brighter. I'm just kind of fidget that until I like it. That's before, that's after looking really solid. I think I'm really, I think it's better than the first run I did so far. Um, and then I think for coloring purposes, I go into tone curve and come to the blue one. And once again, just adding a subtle warm cast across the whole thing. I'm going to add two points. And each time I'm making these points, I'm holding Alt and clicking. So it doesn't, if you just click, it like does that. It just does this nasty, dramatic, like clicks wherever you go. But if you hold Alt, it just does it right there. Doesn't do a huge dramatic one. Keeps it a straight line until you adjust it. So I'm going to hit Alt right there and bring this one down slightly. So I'm adding a touch of warmth to everything. Let's see if I like that or not. Um, yeah, I like it, I think. We can always go back to it later if I don't. Um, but yeah, so before, after, looking pretty great. And then now let's get into the specific steer of this still saw. So again, you can see what is selected here. And one thing I'm doing too is when I zoom in like that and I hold space, you can click and drag all around the image instead of like, if you weren't, you would just be painting, but you hold space and it negates that. Let you go around like that. Um, that also works the same in Photoshop as well as the timeline in Premiere. It's across all the platforms like that. Um, yeah, anyways, here's the saw selected as it should be. And let's just go into it. So I guess our goal for it is to be the brightest, the, one of the brighter parts of the image, uh, but especially against the subject. So pretty obvious to up the exposure there slightly. Um, I won't touch the contrast yet. And the thing is too, you have to remember, this is the, it's 
it's looking at the raw image. So if you hit before, all of this is a shadow and maybe a little bit of mid-tone. So if I'm going to affect the highlights on it, it might affect it a little bit, um, but it might, but it kind of just generally targets the whole thing. So you have to keep that in mind. I think the best way to, what we'll, we'll get the best result is if we go a little bit on the exposure and then just come down to these texture sharpness ones. Um, so let's up the sharpness first and then the clarity as well. Zoom in a little bit, make it, there it is. So just do that, up the texture as well. Um, and this is, this is a, a great product to be doing this with because I mean, when you think of Still or any of those type of like tool companies, they have a very gritty style. You think of just like these people in the grit, like doing hard work. So it's really easy to make it pop out with a bunch of <laughs> texture and, and all that stuff. Um, probably no D, not doing anything on the D haze. But yeah, a ton on the texture and clarity. And then I'm also going to the temperature and actually taking it down a little bit. So reason I'm doing that is because the ground is more warm, the subject's more warm, but, and I can take a little bit of warmth out of that to make it pop out from the subject and the ground that much more. Um, I noticed one thing kind of has this weird little bleed right here. So it kind of creates this, uh, almost looks like a little aura that I don't like going on. So I'm gonna hold Alt as I'm targeting that and just delete that out of there. I guess that's also a part because the blade's moving so fast as a blur. So I guess that's might be it too. Um, let's see, anything else we could do to that? Maybe add a touch of contrast. Yeah, so I'll turn that off and on. I'll just zoom in real quick so you can see this. Off, very flat, <laughs> very... Uh, it just kind of blends in with most of the image and then on boom just pops right out but it's not like overdone that's the thing like you want to be careful with it um, but for this scenario like I think it really pops out that saw perfectly it's not too overdone it makes it like you can see that touch of coolness added to it too it goes a long way um, it's it's a little brown from like the dirt that it's been in and all that stuff so just taking a little bit of coolness or a little bit of warmth out of it, making it cool, pops it out. And then really what sells it is the clarity, the texture, all that. And I think the last thing we could do is, so two main parts, two, the main, slow down here. Um, I love the orange in the image, orange on the saw and orange on their hat. And especially if it's for still, the guy's also using, uh, wearing a still hat. So I want to pop that out too just using our local adjustments, command alt shift S, target that hat, and then command alt shift L to make it brighter. Don't wanna overdo it though. You could easily do that. And then I just wanna make it more orange. It seems a little red. The adjustment on the chainsaw was amazing. Like Thank not you. overdone, but but removing, removing that kind of hazy brown yeah it, it makes a it makes a big difference in the image yeah and it's a bit more structured and, and, and contrast it's i i think you're i think everyone here would agree this is what makes andrew kearns under kearns was you edit yeah. but you don't it's it's always in um in the context of the image it's not overdone yeah and that's that's and I, like that's a skill because a lot of people there's a lot of over editing that gets done you know, I think you would guilty of it. Yeah. Yeah. Or we all done it, but you're very mindful of this and that's kind of, this is very cool. Yeah. And, it, and it's just trial and error too. Like it takes, like you kind of figure out these little things. And so for instance, like the reason why I took out, like I knew I wanted to add blue into it, taking out that warmth, that subtle, like brownish tint 
from all the dirt it had on it was because everything around it is brown. So if I add a little bit of blue into it, it's going to pop out. And like that subtle thing added so much and alongside with the clarity, the texture, all that, like, like the main focus of this shot is that saw now. And that, that's really, and I thought about that with texture, with, with contrast and texture, with contrast and color, with all that. Like I, I really do think a lot in contrasts, whether that's size, big or small, color, warm or cool, stuff like that. So, yeah. So Andrew, I actually had trouble with editing this because I was try trying to find contrast beyond the contrast of light. Yeah. So being able to toss in the contrast and color, I mean, it yeah. just, it changes the whole thing. Good. Yeah. And that's like, yeah. It, when you start thinking of contrast in every way you can think of contrast, like most people think of it light and dark and obviously that's a huge contrast point, but yeah, like you can think of it in texture, like the sharpest thing is that saw and the not sharpest thing is everything else in the image. So naturally that contrast of the sharpness versus the dualness is going to make it stick out. Um, and that's really what goes through my mind as I'm editing like these images from color to exposure value to sharpness, dualness, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's really cool that you got some insight from that. Makes my data here. Sure, man. Um, so really quick, the last thing before, after, and then go side by side here. Yeah, looking quite a bit better from the raw. And then I want to see the first one real quick. That's not the first one. Yeah, so this is the, the one I just did. And this is the first one. And you can still see the saw, same thing. I think it's really interesting. I think the colors in this one came out better. But I think the saw sticks out better in this one. Um, so something to be said about that. Like this is much more of a neutral edit, a little less warmth. Uh, and I think the saw sticks out a little better. So yeah, I think finding a happy medium between the two would be the real answer. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that, how that came out. Cool. Thank you. Steven, thank you so much for submitting. We yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks guys. No, it was a blast. So I appreciate you selecting it. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to share about the image or any of that? Or are you, you good? No, it's just, I'm good. Thanks for the inspo, Joel. Appreciate it, guys. Absolutely. Take care, Stephen. Take Cheers, care. Fellas. Yeah. So I, was, I love beaming people in and out. It's pretty cool. Feature. Yeah, a lot of power. A lot of power. That's not, yeah, no, but Stephen, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah. I think that's probably good for edits. Are you cool yeah. with that? Yeah, if there's any other questions. There was a couple like, other questions. If we want to just, we can answer a couple questions yeah. before the end. Do a rapid fire round. Okay, rapid fire. Do you always start editing from scratch or do you use your own presets? I haven't used presets in years. Yeah, I, I pretty much do everything from scratch. I, I occasionally, I don't even know if I have them on my computer anymore, um, but I would find inspiration from Visco. I'm seeing if I have them. I don't think I do. No, I don't have them anymore, but I do, I think Visco is a great way to find inspiration um, because it can like show you different color tones you might not have thought of. But at this point, like, yeah, I haven't, I haven't edited with a preset other than Visco on the phone, on iPhone photos in years. And I think it's really important to learn that because as everyone's selling their presets and doing all that to be able, like, you know, if you, if you have a client job and you slap a preset on and they say, oh, can you change this? And you don't know how to because you just slapped your preset on or, or someone else's preset on. It's not going to, you know, you can't really do that um, in the mm -hmm. long run. So learning, learning the programs, all that stuff. Um, I think it's really important. And I don't think anything's wrong with a preset. Like if you have some that work really well and you know how to manipulate it, right? Like by all means. But for me, like I haven't, like, I feel like it's very limiting for, yeah. I guess, let's say you're, let's say in your other workshop, you know, you go to the coast and you put together these, this incredible story for this product. You're, you're with a few friends or a yeah. and some other people, you know, in this workshop and, and you throw in, like, let's say you spend a big time editing an image. Sometimes you'll command C, command copy some of these 
changes and apply it to the same set, right? So you're not making presets, but you're saving time. You're not like for people watching, you're not spending that much time on every image if it's in the same lighting situation, same story. Absolutely, yeah. So that's totally different than presets, like just kind of synchronizing all the images in the collection so they look well together, like totally. I think that no, no harm, no foul in that. And I do that all the time, absolutely. Cool question here from Aaron. Do you often, oh, there's, because we're doing the rapid fire, there's a lot of questions coming up. That's fine. Do you often edit, then resist and re-edit the same image, like different day, different oh. perspective. All the time, yeah, all the time. I I find that, actually the, the photo I posted today on Instagram, I like couldn't even figure out if I liked the before or after better. Like I'll go back and forth so much. Um, one thing I've tried to do is just like, if I'm struggling with an edit, or if, like, if I'm either struggling with it or if I'm way too pleased with it, I'll like walk away and come back later. And I'll usually try to see how I feel about it later. I think it's really important to not edit and then post. Like I, I really give it time before I, I, I want to share it or before I confirm it's a final thing. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, but to answer your question, yeah, I go back and forth way too much. <laughs> It's a lot easier when it's not my photo. It's actually interesting. Like, I feel like I edited these so much more like efficiently and I knew what I wanted from them because I wasn't so attached to the image I took, you know? I think that's an interesting, interesting um, observation. Very interesting. Um, were you most self-taught in Adobe Suite and Lightroom specifically or was there like a, a valuable resource? Such yeah. A so or what, what was going on? With Lightroom, a buddy of mine showed me the basics of setting it up, understanding how catalogs work. I saw a question earlier about if someone asked if I did catalogs for each shoot or how I did it. I do it by hard drive usually. Um, for this specific one, I wanted to make sure my computer was running well, so I created a whole new catalog and imported photos that weren't mine just to have them separate from all my photos. Um, yeah, so that's how I set up my catalog. But anyways, a buddy showed me Lightroom, show me how to set it up, set up catalogs, all that. And from there, I just learned all the shortcuts and all that kind of on my own by Google searching, by maybe watching a few videos here and there. Um, but the Adobe Suite, so Adobe Premiere is a different story. Um, uh, my mentor a long time ago, Dave Sproul, he's probably not watching this, but shout out to Dave Sproul. Um, he showed me the basics of Premiere and then kind of showed me how to like basically make videos, cut them. And then I went on that for a while. And then what really took me from this to this, from good to great in Premiere was one of Ben Brown's editing tutorial. Ben Brown used to make daily, he was like one of the OG daily vloggers. And he has this brilliant um, video about how he edits his vlogs and just some of the shortcuts, like you see all the shortcuts I'm doing in Lightroom, I'm doing the exact same thing in Premiere because the way I see it is like the more reps you get in each program, like the more you're doing those reps, the faster you're gonna get and all that. So as I learned those shortcuts, I was able to get way more reps in on Lightroom, on Photoshop, on Premiere and the After Effects stuff I'm learning. Like the way I'm like, if you can learn those shortcuts, like I. I highly encourage you to because you're just going to move so much faster and then if you have three ideas for an edit you can try all three of them a lot faster than than just settling for one because you don't want to you don't want to take so much time um yeah so so kind of self-taught but self-taught and as in also taking from videos and and just applying it to it and once you, I mean, you'll kind of get a grasp for it too. Like you'll see a lot of shortcuts between the suite will overlap each other. So like I said, the alt key, for instance, select makes things slower, selects less in Lightroom. It also kind of does the same thing in Premiere as well as Adobe After Effects. Like it all kind of correlates across the board. So it's very interesting. You know? You can tell, I think when everyone's watching that you had a lot of practice because it's pretty <laughs> Definitely not my first time doing this. Yeah. That whole auto masking thing, you know, that's something that's something that I didn't really realize that, but that's something that I would pull the photograph in, in Photoshop for. Yeah. No, it, like, auto masking is insane. That's powerful. Like crazy. Yeah. Your computer will breathe very heavy, but it's worth it. <laughs> cool. Um, pertaining to your Instagram slash uh, portfolio, 
would you yeah. say you have a certain color aesthetic or do you just edit the photo to you just think it looks good and then that's your aesthetic or are you like looking at your instagram or your portfolio and you're like hey i kind of want to maintain this hmm. ambiance or what, what what have you yeah if you go you know a few years ago like 20 up to 2017 i would say i cared a lot more about having an aesthetic for my photographs than i do now um really the only things that um really the only things that are aesthetically the same in my images now are the highlights thing that I was talking about. So clipping the highlights and the curves. Um, usually I don't have a ton of contrast in them. Um, it, and if it is contrast, it's like contrast to bring out the subject. Um, it used to be kind of that dark faded shadowy stuff. Um, that was the aesthetic back then, but now it's like, I don't really do that. I would say the main aesthetic thing I do have going on is I do love warm tone images. Um, and I'd say I naturally gravitate toward that warmth. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I definitely don't. I personally don't think I have a specific aesthetic, but maybe it could be described as warmth, a little bit de more decontrasted, heavy contrast on the subject. Uh, I mean, center composition is a huge one I do. I guess that's like, pretty aesthetic um yeah but uh, but n not in terms of color a ton other than the warmth thing like a, i don't really like try to go like a blogger aesthetic that has like a really clean white look to it like i, I just don't really think that way i kind of go image by image yeah where in your post-production process do you use photoshop um, okay. This is actually a good question. Cause I, like I said earlier, like I haven't been in Photoshop a ton lately, but where it does come in clutch is if I'm removing a ton of stuff. Um, if I'm getting very nitty gritty with color stuff, which happens very rarely. Um, but one big thing I do. So like those, um, in Lightroom, those, uh, the, what is it? The profile corrections as well as the transformations. Those go a little bit, but you can do crazy stuff with transform with transforming in Photoshop. Like you can really just lock in your comp without like, you know, I'm not like fo like photoshopping things into or like photoshopping massive parts out of images. Like I, I don't really do that too much, if ever. But like warping the image and transforming it so your con composition is just much more locked in, it's really helpful. Um, it'd be hard to describe in words, but using the transform tool, the skew tool, um, the liquify tool a little bit on some things, like it helps a ton. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, Andrew, Joe, thanks for. Oh, you're welcome. Oh. Andrew and Joel, thanks for your generosity and rich content here. Being a free workshop, I was prepared for a ton of sales pitches and ready to bail after 15 minutes. This has been highly informative and totally worth my time. Appreciate you guys. Aaron, Good. thank you. That's the goal. Um, but, you know, sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's workshop, limited early access does end tomorrow. So if you're curious, like he goes into much greater depths than he is this evening. Yeah. I'm doing a hard sales pitch right now, Aaron. Thank you very much. But it's amazing. Andrew, Andrew, like just, we just all watched The Wizard. And if you want to get it in even greater depth, check out his workshop, Mastering Light Photoshop and Lightroom Fundamentals. It was already great. Lightroom updated. And now there's like a 14 yeah. new episodes. It's like another workshop. So it's amazing. 99 bucks on our website. Yeah. So also too, so if you want to rewatch this again, if you guys... Yeah, why don't we watch this again for the sake of it? It'll be recorded, uploaded to Wildest. I'll probably upload it on my channel as well. And then a few days ago, I actually took some of the submitted images and edited them on my YouTube channel as well. So there's like four in there as, that I edited. You can also watch. So plenty of free stuff as well as, yeah, the workshop is on sale until tomorrow night. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, awesome. yeah, just huge thanks to everyone who came through too. Like, it's, like I said at the beginning, it's really cool to see people investing time into their, um, into themselves and like learning and education. Like the past few months, I've kind of taken a step back and done that for myself, just learning and investing in this stuff I've wanted to learn. And it's been one of the best seasons for like 
for me for that. So for those of you who are here, you're on the right track. It's just such a fruitful thing to do. So beneficial in the long run. Um, yeah. So thanks for, thanks for coming in and investing in yourself and spending time with me and trusting me with your education. Mm. Yeah. Andrew, it's a pleasure. Always yeah. a pleasure. Do you think in big shout out to Joel too? No, no, for no, 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 don't do that. No, it was fun, man. Always a pleasure. So uh, thank you, and look forward to seeing you, seeing yeah. you again, man. Yeah, soon enough. Everyone, thank you. Yeah. Take care. Peace out. Peace.